There's nothing more embarrassing than sitting in your car on a cold morning, proudly telling your neighbor how you're taking care of your engine by warming it up for 10 minutes, only to have them say, um, actually, that's destroying your engine. You quickly grab your phone to fact check this verbal beatdown, but realize, oh my god, they're right, how could you have been so wrong? If you don't want this to be you, then listen up, because here are nine engine idling myths that are probably costing you thousands right now. Let's tackle the first big idling myth that's probably costing you money right now. Many people believe you need to idle your car for several minutes before driving, especially on cold mornings. This myth needs to die, and here's why. Modern cars with fuel injection systems and electronic control units are incredibly smart. They automatically adjust the fuel mixture based on temperature. That old advice about warming up your car for 10 or 15 minutes? That's from the era of carburetors, and those days are long gone. Here's what actually happens in your engine during a cold start. The electronic control unit, or ECU, immediately detects the engine temperature and adjusts everything automatically. All you need is 30 to 60 seconds. Just enough time to buckle up and adjust your mirrors. That's it. But here's where it gets interesting. Your engine's coolant might warm up quickly during idling, but the oil temperature is a different story. Engine oil needs to reach between 180 and 210 degrees Fahrenheit to work properly. And guess what? Idling is the slowest possible way to get there. Even newer diesel engines need no more than three minutes before driving. The old concern about diesel fuel gelling in cold temperatures has been resolved through winter fuel blends that better withstand colder temperatures. Extended idling leads to increased valve train wear, carbon buildup, and oil contamination from extended low temperature operation. Take police cars for example. Studies show that one hour of idling equals 33 miles of driving wear. Why? Because during idling, the engine runs with cold, thick oil that can't properly protect all those moving parts. The longer you idle, the longer your engine runs without proper protection. Now for the second myth, people think idling warms up their engine effectively. This is completely backward, and here's the science behind it. Your car isn't just an engine, it's a complex system of parts, including your transmission, wheel bearings, and other components. These parts only warm up when the car is actually moving. Real-world tests show something shocking. Even after 40 minutes of idling, many vehicles still haven't reached their optimal operating temperature. This is especially important for turbocharged engines. A turbocharger spins at incredibly high speeds and needs proper oil flow for protection. Idling actually creates the worst possible conditions for these sensitive parts. The oil isn't circulating properly, and the turbo isn't getting the protection it needs. For diesel engines, it's even more critical. A diesel engine might not reach proper operating temperature at all while idling. It needs to be under load, actually moving and working to warm up correctly. That's why you'll see big rig drivers start their trucks and begin driving almost immediately, even in cold weather. The real solution? Start the engine. Wait 30 to 60 seconds and then drive gently for the first few minutes. This gets everything warmed up properly and ensures all parts of your engine get the protection they need. Your car will actually warm up faster this way and you'll prevent unnecessary wear on your engine. Now let's talk about idling myth number three that hits your wallet directly. Fuel consumption during idling. There's this common belief that idling uses barely any fuel and that it's better to keep the engine running than to restart it. The numbers tell a completely different story. Let's break down the real fuel consumption during idling. A compact sedan, like a Toyota Corolla, burns about 0.17 gallons of fuel per hour while idling. Bigger cars, like a Ford Crown Victoria, use about 0.39 gallons per hour. That might not sound like much, but it adds up fast. If a car idles for 25 minutes while making five stops for five minutes each, it can waste about a gallon of fuel that's equivalent to driving at 40 MP for the same duration. Major companies like FedEx and UPS have recognized this and trained their drivers to turn off their engines during deliveries regardless of duration. Here's a simple math that might surprise you. The average person idles their car for about 16 minutes every day. Over a year, that wastes up to five full tanks of gas.
Just sitting there, burning fuel, going nowhere. Think about that. Five tanks of gas literally disappearing into thin air. Even manufacturers acknowledge this. Toyota's remote start feature automatically shuts off after 10 minutes, indicating that idling beyond this duration is unnecessary. But what about restarting the engine? Doesn't that use more fuel? Here's the truth. Starting your engine uses about the same amount of fuel as idling for 7 seconds. Yes, just 7 seconds. For modern diesel engines, the break-even point is approximately 6 to 10 seconds of idling. This is especially true for modern engines, which are far more efficient at starting compared to older carbureted engines. When the engine is already warm, starting it uses even less fuel than a cold start. Studies show that if you're going to be stopped for more than 30 seconds, it's more fuel efficient to turn off the engine. That's why many modern vehicles come equipped with auto stop start systems that automatically shut off the engine when idling to save fuel and reduce emissions. Here's an idling myth number four that keeps coming up in every auto shop. People think that frequently restarting their engine causes more damage than letting it idle. Let's look at what really happens inside your engine during both situations. When your engine is idling, it's actually not in the best situation. The oil pressure is lower than when you're driving, which means parts aren't getting the lubrication they need. The engine oil temperature also stays too low, making it thicker and less effective at protecting engine components. Extended idling can even lead to shorter maintenance intervals due to unnecessary wear on the engine. Now, let's talk about your battery and starter. Yes, starting your engine does use some battery power. But here's what most people don't know. Your alternator charges your battery better when you're driving than when you're idling. At idle speed, the alternator isn't spinning fast enough to produce its optimal charging output. In fact, idling for long periods can drain the battery faster, especially if accessories like lights or the air conditioner are running. The wear on starters from frequent restarts? It's actually minimal in modern vehicles. Real-world data shows that frequent starts cause far less wear than people assume, especially when the engine is warm. Most of the wear on an engine happens during cold starts, when oil pressure is low and oil hasn't fully circulated. But if the engine is warm, the strain on the starter and engine is significantly reduced. Here's something really interesting about modern start-stop systems. Car manufacturers specifically design these systems with heavy-duty starters, robust batteries, and enhanced components like reinforced bearings to handle frequent starts. These systems are built to manage around 500,000 start cycles, far beyond what you'd typically encounter in everyday driving. And they also come with fuel saving and emission reduction benefits, which are particularly noticeable in stop-and-go traffic. Here's a dangerous myth number five, it's costing people thousands in repairs, thinking that modern engines can handle extended idling without any problems. Let's look inside an engine to see what's really happening during long idle periods. As I already explained, oil pressure is minimal when engine is idling. At highway speeds, oil pressure might be at 50 or 60 pounds per square inch. This is because an oil pump is directly connected with the engine. Look at these connecting rod bearings. During idling, they're taking twice the beating compared to when you're driving at highway speeds. Why? Because at higher speeds, oil creates a better cushion between moving parts. At idle, that cushion gets thinner, and metal starts touching metal where it shouldn't. Now let's talk about carbon buildup. During idling, fuel doesn't burn as completely as it does at higher speeds. This creates black, sticky deposits that coat everything inside your engine. These deposits build up on valve stems, piston rings, and inside the combustion chamber. Over time, this gunk can make your engine run rough, lose power, and even fail emissions tests. The cooling system also struggles during extended idling. Your radiator works best when air is flowing through it at driving speeds. During idling, especially with the air conditioning on, the cooling fan has to work overtime. Here's something most people don't notice until it's too late. Water in the exhaust system. During idling, your exhaust never gets hot enough to evaporate all the water that forms as a byproduct of combustion. This water sits in your muffler and exhaust pipes, causing rust from the inside out. That's why you might see water dripping from your exhaust pipe on cold mornings. Even your engine oil suffers during long idle periods. 
the fuel can contaminate the oil more easily at idle speeds, breaking down its protective properties faster. This is because, during extended idling, this extra fuel doesn't burn completely because the engine is too cold. Some of it can seep past your piston rings and mix with your engine oil, diluting it. Look at these spark plugs from an engine that idled too much. See that black sooty coating? That's what happens when fuel doesn't burn completely. These deposits can cause misfires, rough running and poor fuel economy. The same thing happens to fuel injectors, making them spray fuel in an uneven pattern. Let's bust another common Italy myth number six. That you need to keep your car idling to maintain comfortable temperatures whether it's hot or cold outside. This myth is costing you money and potentially damaging your car, no matter what the weather is like. In hot weather, many people leave their cars idling with the air conditioning running. Your AC system actually works less efficiently when the engine is idling. The compressor needs higher engine speeds to work at its best. Plus, when you're idling, there's less airflow through the radiator, which makes your cooling system work harder than it needs to. Now let's talk about cold weather. People in places like Siberia, where temperatures drop way below freezing, have done extensive studies on this. The results? Extended cold weather idling actually increases engine wear. Why? Because during cold idling, the engine runs with a richer fuel mixture which leads to more contamination in your oil. Here's what happens during cold idle. Blow-by gases, which are combustion gases that slip past the piston rings, increase dramatically. These gases contain moisture and unburned fuel that get into your oil. When this happens at idle speeds, there isn't enough heat to evaporate these contaminants, so they just sit there, diluting your oil and reducing its ability to protect your engine. The real solution for temperature control? In winter, scrape your windows, start your engine and drive gently after about 30 seconds. The engine will warm up faster and your heater will actually produce hot air sooner. In summer, Use a windshield sunshade and crack your windows slightly when parked. These simple steps work better than idling. For those really cold mornings, consider using a block heater. They use much less energy than idling and actually warm up the engine more effectively. Plus, they help your engine start easier and reduce that initial cold start wear that happens in winter. Let's talk about myth number seven about start-stop systems during idling. Don't actually work and people hate it. You know, the feature that shuts off your engine at stoplights. A lot of folks think these systems don't really work or that they damage the engine. Time to look at the real facts. Real world testing shows that start-stop systems can improve fuel economy by four to 8.7%. That might not sound like much, but it adds up fast. In city driving where you might stop 30 times during your commute, those savings really start to show up in your fuel bills. Here's how these systems actually work. The engine computer monitors dozens of factors like battery voltage, engine temperature, and climate control settings. It only shuts off the engine when conditions are perfect. The starter motor used in these systems isn't your regular starter either. It's a heavy-duty unit specifically designed to handle hundreds of starts per day. But what about the battery? Start-stop systems use special AGM batteries that are built differently from regular car batteries. These batteries can handle many more start cycles without wearing out. They're also monitored constantly by the car's computer, which won't activate the start-stop feature if the battery voltage is too low. Now, let's talk about the engine bearings in cars with start-stop systems. These bearings are specially designed to handle frequent starts and stops. They are made with advanced materials and are built to hold oil in place, so they stay lubricated even when the engine restarts. This is important because most engine wear happens during startup when oil pressure is low. Without these special designs, frequent restarts could damage the bearings. Here's something interesting. Start-stop technology was first developed for hybrid cars, but it worked so well that it spread to regular gasoline engines. The wear and tear savings from not idling actually outweigh any extra wear from restarting. That's why more car makers are making this feature standard. Here's the last big myth we need to bust. Some people think idling actually saves on maintenance costs. The real numbers tell a completely different story and your wallet needs to hear this. Cars that idle frequently need oil changes much sooner. 
Instead of going 10,000 miles between oil changes, you might need to change it at 8,000 miles or even sooner. Why? The oil gets contaminated faster during idling. The cooling system takes a beating too. When you idle, especially with the air conditioning on, your radiator fan runs more often. These fans aren't designed to run constantly, and replacing one can cost hundreds of dollars. The water pump also works harder during idling, but without the benefit of good airflow through the radiator. For turbocharged engines, the maintenance costs can really add up. These engines need specific oil weights, like 0W40, to protect the turbo. During idling, this oil isn't circulating properly, which can lead to expensive turbocharger repairs. A new turbo can cost thousands to replace. The bottom line is this, idling your car doesn't help anything. It wastes fuel, increases wear and tear, and costs you money in both the short and long run. Modern engines are designed to start and run right away, not sit there burning fuel for no reason. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more money-saving car tips. Drop a comment below with your thoughts on idling, maybe share how much fuel you think you could save by avoiding unnecessary idling. Thanks for watching and remember, your engine will last longer if you let it do what it was designed to do. Run at proper operating temperature while actually moving.